Guardians are set to play tonight. 6-10, bit of an early game, so we'll jump on a couple of minutes early. 6-10 is your first pitch. It's the second of three against the Angels of Los Angeles. Seems redundant, uh, but it works. They beat them last night. They are looking for win number five in a row. They're on a streak right now. That's what they call it in sports, a streak. Uh, sometimes it's winning. Sometimes it's losing. Right now they're on a winning streak. So uh, Guardians baseball still plenty to play. A few more, more weeks left. But 6-10 tonight here on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app. And by the way, if you listen to the show on the app and you do it from – uh, out of state, tell me where you do that so I can make sure you are on our map. Isaiah is one of our bureau chiefs in Jacksonville, Florida. Butch is in North Tonawanda, New York. Ryan's in Seattle. Um, Zach is one of our bureau chiefs in Asheville, North Carolina. One of your top 10 beer cities. Hey, I'm going to be in Asheville at the end of September going into October. I, that's not even a plug. I don't even know where I'm going to be. But <laughs> he's, just, being, he's doing plugs for his vacation now. Well, it's a mean. I'm going to be in an Airbnb. Yeah. Oh, you are doing a show. We're doing shows, Asheville? but it's like it's basically like a work vacation because it's, it's around Jim 2's birthday. And we're like, hey, if we can go hang out for a weekend, let's do it. So mm-hmm. uh, we're doing that. Hanging out with my buddy Jim. We have a good time. Um, Terry the Goat, by the way, ended up at 5-10 and 10 for week one. Not a strong start, but she gave me a lot of games. She gave me all but one game. I, I, I didn't take the time to figure out which game she didn't pick. Uh, but she picked the Seahawks over the Broncos last night. Good pick. And they barely won it. You know, the opposite end of the Cade York coin. This was a, I think this is a much farther kick. But uh, 64 yards, I believe. Yeah. But it was <laughs> also, bananas. they didn't even like, try and get closer. Like, it was a weird, the way that coach handled the end of that game was very strange. Well, Russell Wilson left Seattle famously to go play for the Denver Broncos. And so the entire game was on the line for the Broncos, and the kicker missed the kick. So the Seahawks won 17 to 16 last night on Monday Night Football. 64. McManus missed it, and the Seahawks are going to win this game. And Pete Carroll, with Geno Smith at quarterback, is going to start 1-0. and And Russell Wilson, the Broncos, come in here and come up a point short. Mm-hmm. So that was, um, that was uh, uh, Terry's last win for week one. She went 5-10. and ten. Only games she picked correctly were Bears. Vikings, Bucks, Seahawks, and Browns. Uh, Browns play the Jets this coming Sunday here at home. It's the home opener. It's going to be nuts downtown. I'll give you a little plug of my own. How about yeah. that? Why should you guys about, get all the fun time? Get all the fun <laughs> plugs. Uh, we're starting up the new season of the Cox Out pregame parties. Those happen two hours before every home game. Even the Thursday night football games, two hours ahead of time. Is there a Monday night game? I got to cut out of here early and yeah. scoot down to Ivy a couple of Thursdays. But I don't know if we uh, – is there a Monday night uh, – I don't think it's a home game. Okay. If we're doing Monday night football, I, I got them all mapped out, and I don't know if – you might be right. I'm not I'm not sure. I haven't been invested. I haven't been paying attention. But, um, but the thing is, it probably costs so much to get into Ivy for the Cox Out pregame because they got a big radio star there. It's a great club. It's probably like 40 or $50 cover just to get in. I don't know who that radio star is, but I'll be there, and it's free to get in. So oh, I, I hope I'm not crazy. I, I hope I'm not competing with one of the local radio stars because I can't uh, – I'm not going to be able to handle that. But, uh, no, it's great. We, we do it two hours before kickoff, so I start uh, – I get going around 1030, and the Ivy is right at the, the tip end of West 6th, right there at West 6th and Lakeside. Just a hop and a skip for me now. You're going to park here and walk over? Uh, hells yes. You could get a scooter and scoot over. Oh, God, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be a lot of fun. I bet you could find one on, yeah. set, on Sunday There's morning. There's one right across the street. You just, just yeah. pick yeah. them up Reserve randomly, it. right? Yeah. You just well, you got to download an app on your phone. Yeah, you got to make sure you got the app for them, but it's easy to do, and they're they're pretty fun. Oh, awesome. I want to do that. Do it. They're great. Maybe if I'm – I usually give myself plenty of time, but, like, maybe I'll cut it close just so I can scoot over there. There you go. 
But anyway, Cox Out pregames are, are the grand prize of trip for two to the Bahamas. So it's with Bud Light, and Ivy is always a blast, and it's a ton of fun. So I hope you'll be down there on Sunday morning. It's a, the very first one. we got a whole season of them to go. So before every home game, uh, we do the Cox Out pregames at the Ivy this Sunday morning. So fun. Brownie the Elf is back on the field. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. Browns have been running with a no midfield logo for a long time, and some eagle eye up in a helicopter took a photo of Brownie the Elf. Uh, I guess Patty Harkin over at Fox 8 snapped a shot of uh, First Energy Stadium, and the old school Brownie the Elf. Why was an elf considered to be an image that would strike fear in the hearts of their opponents? You've ever read Tolkien, you'll know. <laughs> they had one of the power oh, does rings. It, does it come right from that? Because mm-hmm. no it doesn't idea. look like anything Tolkien yeah. ever rendered. Yeah, it in, looks uh, more like a uh, workshop type, more of a uh, working in a tree type elf. He's carrying a football, not a chocolate chip cookie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Browns haven't used uh, anything in the midfield for a long time, and so I guess they, uh, this past summer, there was a public vote. Hey, we're going to do something. Let me know. And the fans said Brownie the Elf. It was a big deal in the 60s. It's been around for a long time, and you'll still see it on all kinds of Brown's gear. You'll see Brownie uh, the Elf. But I have, from the first days of my time in Pittsburgh, I've been vexed by why an elf was ever chosen as uh, an image that was supposed to, you know, you, you strike fear in the hearts of your opponents. Same reason why a pair of socks were for your favorite baseball team. Does that I, strike fear in your heart? I think Socks? I, I think of it more important to strike fear in the opponent in football. Football is a full contact sport. It's a violent sport. Its imagery and its teams lend themselves way more to Panthers and Steelers and Bears and, you know, Baseball, yeah, Steelers, baseball is Steelers not just, baseball is not that sport. Football is a sport where you're you're in helmets and you're crashing into each other, and it's you know it's cute. There's nothing about the Steelers logo that makes you go ooh. It's just like diamonds. It just, yeah, the right? steel. <laughs> it's the Steel City, the logo for American Steel or whatever mm-hmm. that company was, right? I have no idea. Yeah, yeah that's it was a ah, com- capitalism. Hey, ah. No, but it was it's the steel city. I mean, listen, we have orange helmets. We got no room to talk. We they, they couldn't even come up with a logo for the Browns. They go, eh, we're going to name it after a guy, and we're not going to give him a logo. At least put the dude's face on it. I, I that think- would have been amazing, by the way, if they had put Paul Brown's face on the helmets. <laughs> Seriously. Like, Especially there's those no, old helmets. That's what I'm saying. There's no other team named after a guy. It's not the Pittsburgh Roonies. Rooney. So, <laughs> Rooney. Uh, I lose my with you. Um, you know. Why not put the dog down there? I think that's, if you want to. I guess the dog didn't get enough Sagger. votes. Yeah. Dogs didn't get enough votes. What but to your, to your point, I think that's a great helmet. idea. Yeah. I don't know what the options were. Maybe they just took an open, you know, oh, here they were. the Two renderings of Brownie the Elf? I don't know. Um, 2022 field design. Make your vote count. Oh, so they literally only gave them the elf or the helmet. Mm. Each image with two different renderings. And I guess the one that got so... Like the old school Browns helmet, just the full on side view, or kind of the three quarter turn helmet, and then two renderings of the. I mean, listen, Browns are going to Brown, but um, we got no room to talk with a blank orange helmet. Yeah, put the dog on stuff. I, I don't know why they're they're sleeping on that dog. The association of the elf dates before football. Obviously, all the way to back uh, back to folklore. They were elf-like creatures who helped out with household chores as long as you left them goodies to eat. Mm. Of course, making themselves a natural mascot mm-hmm. for full contact football. Duh. Even representatives from the Cleveland Browns are befuddled as to its exact origin. There you go. So ah, I'm not alone. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's what's going to be. I'm just glad there's something midfield. That's fun to look at. 
You know, you got to have a little bit of showbiz there, a little razzle dazzle. Yeah. You can't just lay uh, the drama at the feet of individual players. You can't just let these guys, uh, it's on their shoulders to create all the spectacle because they threw something on their Instagram that got him in trouble. Teams should be taking some responsibility for this too. And the Browns put the elf out there. They should put Nick Chubb's Batman symbol yeah. that he has. Mm. It says Chubb, but it's, it looks like a Batman. Right. And people are telling me, I understand. Brownie and elf, those are synonymous terms. But it's not the Cleveland Brownies. That's still a nickname for the team. But it, it seems to me that in lieu of anything else, somebody a long time ago just like, you know what, elf. And again, football is very different now than it was back then. So there was probably way less of a premium on, you know, getting people all riled up and when they had the, you know, leather, leather helmets, helmets yeah. <laughs> at the strap. <laughs> but uh, you think they would, uh, I don't know, get, but like uh, make a 2022 uh, brown elf. <laughs> make, make a 2022 elf. Uh, this I don't understand people's uh, just constant dedication to nostalgia. Do a brown elf that's brand new and looks terrifying, right? Yeah. It, it keeps, yeah, like Chucky. Like it keeps, <laughs> everything from the neck down is the same. This is a juxtaposition. You guys are always trying to sell merch. This is how you sell the merch. You, you have the classic brownie body, curly shoes, you know, four-fingered hand. But the head and the face are terrifying. Give your... More of an orc than an elf. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you, right. You, Brownie's you, an orc. Give, yeah. you give your young fans nightmares, but they won't forget those games. And you give your adult fans something to complain about, which is what Cleveland Browns fans like to do the most. The, the you elf, give them one more thing to complain mm -hmm. about. The elf to me always looked like a play off of the Fighting Irish mascot. Like it just I, yeah, like, they did look similar. Like there, no, there's Notre something Dame. to that where they're like, eh, they got that thing. Let's uh, let's go off of that. They're popular. <laughs> People seem to like that. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, anyway, uh, that's fine. It's all good. The dog is bull crap. The elf is something. What do we mean? The dog is bull crap. <laughs> You heard him. It's not the dog looks mean <laughs> when these guys are like dog pound. I'm like, yeah, I, that I get. I get that. Oh, Nobody's Alan, a, it's bull crap. <laughs> the elf <laughs> is what is meaningful. Who when you think about Cleveland Brown football, you're like mystical, magical elves. When I first, <laughs> <laughs> when I first came to town, and I was shopping for tickets, right, trying to ingratiate myself into the local culture, and they said, you can have tickets in the elf pound. <laughs> that didn't get you all. No, I said I I I can't uh, I can't do that. And they said, well, that's all we have left. Well, it's not even called the F the F, <laughs> Elf Pound. <laughs> it's called Rivendale. Uh, um, okay, what's Rivendale? I believe that's where elves are. Oh, in Rivendale. Is that? I believe in Lord of the Rings, right? I don't know, dude. You're the dork here. Nerd alert! Nerd alert! Nerd alert! Where do elves live in? In trees. They're making cookies. Or they make shoes, too. Or shoes. Or presents. They're up there cobbling. The North Pole. Yeah, always Rivendell. be cobbling. <laughs> yeah, Riven, Rivendell. All right. Got it. Well, there you go. You nailed it. You nailed it. Um, Alan, I didn't realize. Where did I find this? Somebody wrote me about Bill... Alan, I would have never guessed that Bill has a fetish for drinking Mary's pee. Because I know, isn't he gross? No, I have a fetish for getting a thousand dollars. I know it's a bet, and Mary should take up, up uh, take it up on him with stipulations. Bill must drink it right out the tap, no, I don't and keep do that. it down. That's weird. That's weird. And Mary needs. No, I don't mean directly from, but like hovering. No, no, no. I don't oh. even mean that. <laughs> I just, I just mean like it hasn't cooled off. Yeah, I would. I was going to give him a full salad bowl of it. 
<laughs> that was what the it old was. salad bowl of heat. Yeah, she had a big gulp right before the show. Thousand bucks. That's Mary needs that's to a eat lot a of mushroom head tickets. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, Mary needs to eat a large amount of beets and asparagus the night before, and drink plenty so of fluids. It's red and smelly. Yes, that's what Come they're on. saying. That's what they want. I mean, I drank my own. It was no big deal. It's you yours. did a shot of pee. Yes. I'm drinking a salad bowl here. It's a big difference. <laughs> well, but she, I'm getting a thousand dollars. But salad bowls are in different sizes as well. I will often, because you know how I eat, I will often make a salad in a shot glass. <laughs> and that's my dinner. <laughs> and then he won't finish and be like, oh, oh, just, I don't like that full so feeling. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Guys, I can't finish this. I did put two carrot shreds on there instead yes. of my normal one. <laughs> That's <carrot> right. <laughs> two carrot shreds. I asked for a single carrot shred and a quarter of a slice of cucumber. Thank you very much. The other three quarters I'll need for my water. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Just some things to consider. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't no. think Mary's going to actually come through with the pee. I don't pee gain anything from thousand that. Dollars. I don't gain anything from Well, that. you're the one that said you you brought it up. You told me to pee in my Tupperware. Yeah. And then I said, "Why? Are you going to drink it?" And you <sighs> said, "How much?" <laughs> that's how conversations go. <laughs> that's right. It makes for good radio, Mary. That's the only reason we're here. Yeah. That's our only responsibility. Our purpose in life. That's right. Alan Cox Show After Hours line. You can leave us messages there. It's still operational for you. It is uh, 216-986-8903. Hey, uh, a couple days ago, Bill was talking about the, the best plan would be to swap the brain, put it into the younger body. Uh, you guys were talking about movies or something like that. Anyways. What were we talking about, putting a brain in a body? Uh, they're, like, trying to grow Oh, yeah, something. yeah, right, right, right. You said get the young body and yeah. put your brain in it. Yep. It's the smart move. Gonna gonna drop one on you where Emilio Estevez actually got top billing over Anthony Hopkins, Rene Russo, and Mick Jagger. 1991, 92, it's called Free Jack. Same principle. Uh, it's hard to find on demand, but uh, it's well worth it. Uh, awesome, terrible sci-fi movie. Thanks, bye. Did you ever see Free Jack? You remember I, that movie? Uh, I saw it. Some of it, I don't remember. I remember it was on all the time on HBO when we had, like, a free preview weekend. And I watched part of it, but I think I fell asleep. But I remember there, it because— there a race car in there? Yes, because yes. Emilio Estevez's character was a race car. The movie's about—okay, so it's way—the movie's 1992. Mm. It's way in the future. It's in 2009. Oh, <laughs> And people who are super rich, listen, some things never change, right? The future is still dominated by super wealthy people and whatever and just um, consigning everyone else to lives of, uh, you know, everybody else is just mm. replacement bodies for rich people. And they go back in time and they snatch someone's body right before they die. And Emilio Estevez's character was a uh, Formula One racer. And right before a crash... They pull his body out. Mick Jagger's like the mercenary, and Anthony Hopkins is the guy that runs the big corporation. I only remember this because it was on one of those, when I was managing Blockbuster Video, it was on one of those trailer tapes they would give us once a month. And they only came at the first of the month, and it was about the new releases. And you had to play it nonstop in mm -hmm. the store for a month. And it was probably what? 25 minutes long. 25 minutes long. And so you're just singing over, over and over and over. And again. over. And so Free Jack was on one of our stupid trailer tapes. And yeah, it was 30 years ago. It's like Renee Russo, who's still hot, by the way. She is. But yeah, to Matt's point, Emilio Estevez was the big star in that movie. Mick Jagger had been kind of trying to dip his toe into acting, and he's not that good. But, uh, and Anthony, and Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins had just done a little movie. And not many people had talked about called Silence, Silence of the Lambs. Of, so well, he wasn't really. But on I got, the radar. no. But I got the <laughs> I got the feeling that Free Jack had been shot before that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and then yeah. they were like, "Oh, we got to get this out." Or they, they it, were shot like back to back, and they're like, "Oh, this is going to be great for us to have him." Because what was ninety one? Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Maybe eighty nine. Silence of the I Lambs. I think it was ninety one. Okay. Because it won Best Picture and it won all kinds of stuff. But, um, 
Yeah, Renee Russo was in that movie, and she's real yeah, cute. 1990. 91. Supposed to be Linda Fiorentino. Remember her? Yeah. Men in Black? She was supposed to be in Free Jack, and they got Renee Russo instead. But anyway, thank you, Matt. That's a good uh, Free Jack is a great. Strange Days is another one of those great inside other people's heads and bodies movies with Ray Fiennes back in the day. Strange Days is a good one to seek out. I mean, but people are joking, but like Emilio Estevez was a huge star around yes. that time. Coming off of Breakfast Club and then yep. he was- uh, Men at Work. And Men at some, Work you know. and, and what was the Young Guns? Young Guns. Yeah, he was he was a legit movie star. He was Mighty a big Ducks. deal. Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks was a few years after that. Yep. Like, I think that was 93. St. Elmo's Fire, yeah. all yeah. those. But Young Guns and Stakeout yeah, with Richard Dreyfuss. Part of the Pack, though, that, having him in that movie- was a draw. That's right. Loaded Weapon One. Remember they're trying to oh, yeah. <laughs> make all those parody movies. He was in the first Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise in yeah, the nineties. He, he gets killed. He gets killed right away. Yeah. <laughs> but he was in it. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, Martin Sheen's my dad. Put me in this. I'm gonna take a break. If uh you want to get a text for something, three five one nine two. You can watch the show at Alancockshow.com. And listen wherever you are on the iHeartRadio app. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7.